Is Poland's government ready to back down on a court ruling that would ban pretty much all abortions? The scale of protests has set the scene for a confrontation between hardliners and those on the streets. This is Roundtable. Hello and welcome to the programme. I'm David Foster. You know, there are fewer than 2,000 legal abortions in Poland each year at the moment, yet the court in question has been packed with Conservatives by the government and they want even stricter laws than those that already exist. In October, the Constitutional Tribunal of Poland struck down a law which had authorised abortions for malformed foetuses. The removal of that law would effectively see the banning of most of the small number of legal abortions carried out there. The ruling prompted Poland's biggest protests since the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1989. Thousands of people took to the streets in cities across the country, Poland already having some of Europe's most restrictive abortion laws. Following the protests, the government delayed implementation of the court's verdict. But protesters say they will fight on. So will the government back down? Very pleased to say that we can welcome to this roundtable Kristina Katspura. She's in Warsaw, Poland's capital, executive director of the Federation for Women and Family Planning. Uh, professor Anita Prasmowska joins us from London. She's a professor of history at LSE specializing, among other things, in Eastern Europe and fascism and in Kraków, in Poland, Tomasz Ochepka, Deputy Director of the Analysis Center of the Jagiellonian Club. And Thomas, I know you support um, the tougher abortion measures. I'll come to you in just a moment, but let's go to Christina first, because you've been on the streets. Gatherings of five forbidden, five plus forbidden, and yet we've seen hundreds of thousands of people together. What is the atmosphere on the streets of Poland? You know, it, it happened just after the judgment of the Constitutional Tribunal in Poland. And according to this judgment, abortion because of fetus abnormalities is unconstitutional. So this is a crime and a doctor could be imprisoned when he performed such kind of abortion. Uh, it was too much for Polish women, you know. There were many, many fantastic, uh, fabulous uh, kinds of protests, marches, demonstrations. Uh, I live in Warsaw, so I took part in a couple of protests, uh, not for a long time because of the pandemia. I'm not a young woman, but <laughs> so uh, I was afraid about my health as well. But I talked to many young girls and men as well, because many men were accompanying their partners, girls, and, and just alone. Because this is not the problem only for women in Poland. This is the problem for Polish families as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, really, this was a huge and still power in Polish women. And Indeed, I'm sure I want to ask you, go, go back a few years and there were similar protests about four or five years ago. Would you say the, the intention of the protesters this time is much stronger? Their determination is stronger? Um, I think that intention and determination were stronger because uh, after 2016 and even 2017 protests and marches, uh, women were in a process of education and many, many campaigns around Poland just rose public awareness about the importance of reproductive health and rights. So women were uh, educated, they understood the meaning of reproductive rights. And right now, when you ask a question on the street, uh, what are you fighting for? for my body, for my decision, for my dignity. So, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, really these um, protests during uh, 2016 were fabulous and they were made you know in a huge grief of polish women because uh, the the fundamentalists uh, went too far one step too far it was a total well, let, let's of ask let's ask thomas about this because i suggested at the start of the the program that you were in favor of these tougher laws do you think they will ever be part of polish law will they get on the statute books or will they just be well, dropped by the government well I, I never said that i was in favor of tougher laws than we have so far uh, i would agree that um, supporters of um, those ruling indeed went a step too far in the sense that this ruling is against the sentiment of, of the society. And uh, to understand uh, the scale and the strength of uh, those protests, we must emphasize that the voters of law and justice, the ruling party, were also against that ruling and such a strict uh, restraint on abortion laws. Uh, which also explains why uh, there were so many protests uh, in the interior, in the middle or even small cities. And, uh, well, we must understand uh, what the so-called abortion compromise um, was about in Poland. And uh, it imposed sanctions on um, performing uh, abortion on demand but uh, the state actually has never been interested to, uh, too much in combating abortion on the ground. And uh, so... Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I want to go back to the earlier point, and, and sorry if I overloaded um, your support for these new laws. I, I just read that you were in favour of the abortion laws. Um, but let's go back just a little bit to the first question, which was, um, do you think they will ever become law? Will they become? Uh, part of the statute book, or will the government back down here? Uh, it's actually a good question, because uh, if we see at uh, these nervous uh, ad hoc moves of the ruling party now, uh, we may wonder if they, uh, what they, what actually their plan is. So they are surprised by the, by the scale of the protests. As we can say, grenade exploded in their hands, and they don't know uh, what to do now. Will they become a law? Well, for sure, they will never be. They will, they will not become uh, an efficient law in the sense that, um, like I said, uh, abortion underground has actually never been uh, combated by by um, by the police, and uh, I don't know why this should why this should change. Uh, so, Thomas, can I come back to you in just a moment because I would like to enlarge on this. Um, first off, with Anita, because I was looking at foreign policy dot. Com, pretty authoritative in terms of obviously international news. The, the headline is Poland's anti abortion dreams become a nightmare. The country's Catholic conservatives have achieved a long sought goal and may have fatally weakened their power in the process. Because looking into this, it seems to me that the, the, the variety of people on the streets young, old, men, women, uh, farming unions, miners, etc., are saying something more about Polish society than simply we don't like these abortion restrictions. I, I think one of the questions that I would say should be the starting point is um, what was the purpose of these laws? And I think it's not only about fertility and control of women's bodies. It is also about um, asserting Polish identity as a Catholic state. It's also about internal conflicts within the present government. It's also about the relationship between the ruling party and the church. Um, and because of that, there will always be terrible confusion about mm -hmm the issue of abortion, which symbolizes all these particular problems. So it's, you know, normally you would think that a debate about abortion is about fertility, it's about a woman's right, about the fetus, about uh, the medical profession. I don't think this is the case in Poland. This, the, to me, it is all about nationalism, about uh, uh, this, this in unbelievable arrogance that with Polish women uh, are in some way are responsible for, you know, uh, the number of Poles that walk on this earth, that this is all about Poland being 
in the forefront of the fight against secularization. So has it become a magnet for those people who want to see much, much broader change in Polish society? I, I'm going to put up a quote on um, the screen now. This is Adam Rojewski, who's a sociologist at the University of Wrocław. Uh, he wrote, it seems, to cut across social structures, very important aspect is the opposition towards the Catholic Church and its influence over authority, education and Poland. Is this a large swathe of Polish society saying we do not like what is going on in our country? I would say that every group is actually addressing this from their own perspective. The young women are most certainly speaking about fertility, about the freedom to choose. There are those who loathe the present government and it's extremely reactionary and very restrict its determination to reform Poland uh, in, in line with a very narrow vision of what Poland is about. And there are also those internal conflicts within peace itself. Uh, these demonstrations uh, presently give the impression of unity, and that unity actually might not prevail. Historically, we know that such groundswell, such anger, tends to be dissipated partly because there are different agendas there. So, Christina, let me ask you this one. Um, when it comes to the recent history of, of Poland, I, I read that under communist rule, uh, there were a great many abortions allowed in Poland. In fact, people used to travel from other less liberal European countries to Poland uh, to have terminations. How quickly has the process changed and therefore how shocked were the people of Poland by what the current authorities brought in? Very shortly. Women's rights uh, were the first issue uh, taken on the table. You know, I remember the first short note in in our daily newspaper that right now we will take on table, take to the parliament the abortion law. So uh, we regained uh, democracy, but women uh, paid for this. And it has started in uh, 1989, and then for two or three years were discussed. And still existing law in Poland, this is the kind of compromise between uh, Polish Catholic Church and uh, politicians. Uh, you know, this is a strange thing because Polish Catholic Church was strongly engaged into the democracy processes in Poland, was very helpful. And after, you know, 1989, when we, uh, during this economic transformation in Poland, the church felt that uh, it could be not useful must to uh, to think about further influence into politics and somehow it happened that uh, many politicians you know were strong catholics uh, practicing regularly so uh, the church did something strange empowered them to uh, to be dependent uh, in their political career on church. So far, many politicians mm. believe that without the support of Catholic Church, their political uh, career will not uh, would not happen. And you, you see, what pass. I'm wondering is, it, it was always going to happen, wasn't it? Because in a Catholic country, and at, at that time, 1989, there was a, a Catholic pope in, in the Vatican. Although it supported yeah. the end of communism, it was always going to be difficult when it came to issues such as women's rights and, and abortion and, and contraception. So it's no surprise, perhaps, that it has gone that way. Um, so, Thomas, let me throw this one at you. Why do you think, is it solely because of this reason, that support for the church has fallen. Opinion poll saying it's down 9% in the last three or four months. Well, uh, while the church teaching on abortion is very clear and um, it, it, it has also a special place in the uh, in the agenda of the bishops, uh, we we should remember we are not speaking uh, when we are speaking about abortion. We're not speaking about the religious but ethical issue. This is a ever this is a never-ending ethical controversy. And uh, if we look at the polls, at, at the surveys, uh, the support and the positive opinion about the Roman Catholic Church in Poland uh, now is much, much lower 
than the support for the existing uh, abortion law from before the, the recent uh, ruling of the constitutional tribunal. So I but is this a reflection of Polish distrust in authority per se, across the board perhaps? This is a proof that many Poles who do not trust the Catholic Church anymore are still in the favor of laws, abortion laws in Poland, which from the European-wide perspective can be perceived as strict. It's not just for me, by the way, to, this is to all three of you to direct the conversation. If you hear something interesting and want to say something in response, please, please do. But I'll, I'll throw this one at you, Anita, and, and also you, Thomas, as well. Um, this, in a sense, could almost be a welcome distraction uh, for Polish authorities, given the criticism they have had uh, over the handling of uh, the COVID pandemic. Yes, absolutely. Because, you see, if we look at abortion, as I pointed out, I, as I mentioned, we, we, we sort of are puzzled by this, the way this matter is handled. But of course, at the background of it, um, the pandemic, I, every government experiences that one, so does the po Polish government, criticism of the way it was handling the matter. But internal conflicts play a very important role. Katrzynski, who is seen very much as the man that epitomized this movement, uh, the man who successfully managed through intrigue and a variety of political maneuvers to keep this, this movement together, is reaching an age where the suspicion is that he might not be as successful. And indeed, there had been we don't know the full extent of internal conflicts, but for example, the Minister of Justice, Jobro, is known to be waiting to either form a, a, a new party or possibly to challenge the authority. But there are, is also the, there are politicians who feel that the relationship between the ruling party at the church has either gone too far or not far enough. Um, these complex battles are playing themselves out, some more distinctly discernible, like, for example, the president, who quite clearly wants to come out with a new initiative on abortion. And there are those who, you know, see this as trying to prove that they are uh, more Catholic than the Pope. In other words, that, you know, this issue of abortion will give them street credibility and therefore they so, are so therefore let, 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 let's if we could move it on a little bit and this will be for all three of you but anita you, you start off are we seeing the end of the old liberalism that came in to replace the old communism and is there something in poland to replace the current societal structure in other words are we seeing the old regime of the 2000s falling apart, and is there something to take its place? I, look, history is never static. Yes, most probably we're seeing that, but it doesn't mean that that's the end of the matter. What we see is that there is no credible political opposition. So the present government, of course, will rule. But what will happen within three, four years, the next elections, uh, there might be consequences to what has happened just now. Okay, I'll let you put your earpiece back in, and you can it doesn't incredibly like being well in with that, <laughs> with that, and also the answer machine going off. And, and go to Christina on this: Is society in Poland changing forever, uh, if not overnight, as Anita has suggested? But certainly, it's a progression. Yes, you know, uh, a part of the political politicians in Poland, especially uh, law and justice ruling party, uh, Polish society as the whole is very progressive. Uh, according to the latest poll, at least 80% of polls are for uh, keeping the existing law, for not um, more restrictive law. And over 60% is for the legal and free abortion in Poland, uh, as in many European countries. So uh, this, the problem with abortion uh, is not legitimized by people. It is against the society, you know. So uh, even earlier uh, research studies uh, told us that um, not less than five million, not more than four and a half million, Polish women uh, uh, perform at least once in her lifetime abortion, and 92% of them 
who were Catholics. So uh, all these, you know, uh, religion uh, things, uh, forbidding of abortion, uh, contraception, sexuality education, uh, these are neglected by the society. It's the so what happens the next? Let's let's go around the panel. Um, Christina, since you're, you're there at the moment, what happens next? Does the government intervene to stop these illegal protests? Does the government decide that it's not going to publish this law on the statute books? In other words, it backs down because it's dangerous. Or does it go ahead and risk further confrontation? What do you think um, is likely in the short term? Likely. You know, it's very difficult to predict because probably uh, the ruling party and Mr. Kaczynski, they don't know what to do. They postponed the parliamentary debate for two weeks uh, because they have no majority for the draft law uh, sent by uh, our president. And they have no uh, even majority within their party. There is a kind of conflict and rumors within the uh, okay, law so they just, don't know what to do next. They don't know. Anita, is this is is this a massive miscalculation? Anita, if you don't mind, Christina, is this a massive miscalculation that is backfiring as suggested? It seems yeah. to be. So yes, yes, it seems as if now they are have lost the initiative. But it doesn't mean that they are not going to try to, in some way, resolve this matter. Um, because the one thing they can do is simply say that abortion doesn't matter. It's become such a symbol of Polish Catholicism. And what about the bigger picture, though, the changing Polish society? If the government um, sort of just pushes this into the long grass, uh, as I've heard suggested it, it might, in other words, just sort of quietly forget about it and say, well, we'll look mm -hmm. at your concerns. Uh, then the problem's going to resurface and uh, the longer term issues are still are still there. The secularization is something we haven't mentioned, yeah. that Poland, like all societies in Europe, uh, uh, the church becomes less relevant. With the end of communism, the church become less of a symbol of the opposition. Opposition took a different form. And that is what the church fought against, uh, becoming irrelevant. Um, there is also the Pope, whom we haven't mentioned. Uh, the present Pope is very different from the <gasps> Polish Pope. His attitude is that the church should get out of the bed. I would be very interested to see if the Pope cares to get re-engage or engage in Polish affairs, that the Polish Episcopate risks its reputation by becoming too close to daily politics. OK, let's ask Thomas about that as we come to round off the programme. The church is becoming increasingly irrelevant in society, in, in Poland, and the authorities would be well advised to be aware of that. Yes, well, uh, one thing that uh, seems particularly interesting to me is that, yes, we are in a, in a trend of secularization, and I'm very much interested how the secularization will change Polish right, Polish secularist right, because the right, the dominating power on political uh, scene of Poland traditionally, has always been less uh, uh, or more Christian, at least at the level of declaration. And I think that within, uh, say, maybe 10 years, maybe 15 years, we can see a sort of Polish equivalent of American alt-right pagan, uh, conservative, but not Christian right. And uh, that's how I would see, the, in the long term, the political conflict uh, in Poland. So, uh, the liberals and the left, who are actually secularists already, and the secularist right. And I think that if, uh, well, if Professor Krasnowska specializes uh, also in uh, research on fascism. Uh, she may have more and more material to, <laughs> to and research. And perhaps that, that's, that's for another day, because we're coming to the last mm. minute or so of the program. Christina, let me ask you, you've been out on the streets with these protesters. Um, are you seeing their um, enthusiasm grow? Yes. Yes, really, I, I, saw, I saw a hope uh, between uh, women in all ages and men as well, hope that something uh, is possible to change. That, that, that this, this was a 
really a great hope for the Polish society, you know, that, that they can be really a, a European country with European law, with all basic human rights uh, addressed to the society in Poland. Because basically uh, speaking, we have been fighting for basic human rights, for our dignity and for democratic country. How long? I don't know. But, you know, the society right now uh, is devoted to this fight. And okay. I think that Christina, it... thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Anita, much appreciated. And Thomas also, thank you uh, for being on this roundtable. Thank you wherever you are. Uh, for watching, I'm David Foster. We hope to have your company next time. Until then, goodbye.